Hello students, welcome to the session. Today we are going to discuss about the periodic properties. This is the backbone in the entire inorganic chemistry. So the periodic properties is directly connected to the NCRT based NEAT preparation for all the S block, P block and D block and total inorganic chemistry. So today we are going to discuss about the detailed picture about the periodic properties and you are going to get one question directly from this particular topic. So before going for the periodic properties, let us do something for you. It is a score examination. So score examination is the India's largest scholarship test examination. And this examination brings you for the guys who are preparing for grade 3 to grade 12. And it is the India's largest scholarship test. So why it is this largest? Why? Because you can see 1 crore rupees worth of scholarships are available for the student community where it is. And you are also going to get the study setup and the laptop depending upon your performance based and also educational allowances and up to 100% of scholarship. And one more important amazing thing about the score examination is all if you are related to infinity learn or not it doesn't matter any student anywhere from any time you can write the score examination and this is purely online examination so why not your description box the score examination link is available you just click it and you enroll now and you are going to get the awesome experience with a score examination and awesome preparation journey with infinity learn and one more important thing a diwali gift for you all so need 2025 all india test series pack and this test series pack contains 27 aits examination and 20 full syllabus mock test and 25 topic wise previous year questions and also three physics chemistry biology books with video solutions on app and also performance reports are also available and benchmarking with Sri Chaitanya students. And the cost was is 5,999 and you can see a limited time offer for your Diwali. 50% off is available. You just enter your coupon code YouTube 50 off. If you enter that, you are going to get the 2,999. It is a special discount for you only. Are you all ready? And without delay, we talk about the periodic properties. So the periodic elements, elements in the periodic table are arranged in the groups and the periods. And if you talk about certain properties of the elements in the periodic table has some gradation in its arrangement. And these are called periodic properties. And these periodic properties, you can say atomic rating, ionization energy, electron affinity and electron negativity, metallic nature and nature of oxides. And we are going to discuss about a short briefing about this and how these are varying in a period and a group in this today's session of agenda. And you, I can guarantee you that you will be getting one question based on this today's discussion. Are you ready? And take a pen and paper and note down the important tricks that I am going to give you to solve certain questions from periodic properties. Get ready. Let's talk about the uh, screening effect. So this is a screening effect it decides everything. This is actually the most confusing topic for those students preparing for uh, NEET examination. So this is screening effect. This is the nucleus and this is a test electron. This electron is being attracted towards the nucleus. And, but the problem is the electrons present between the nucleus and the outermost electron behaving like a screen so that the nuclear forces are going to be obstructed. So as a result of there is a repulsion force between the neighboring uh, electrons and also there is an attraction by the nucleus. So as a result of that this electron experiences effective charge from the nucleus that is called as effective nuclear charge you can say z effective and the electrons which obstruct the nuclear forces that is called as a screening effect 
or also called shielding effect. And how much effective nuclear charge is experienced by this electron is calculated based on the Slatter's rule. Based on the Slatter's rule, you can say the effective nuclear charge is equal to atomic number minus screening constant and a screening constant you can calculate by using a Slatter's rule. We are going to discuss about the Slatter's rule in the previous class as well as in the upcoming classes we have some sessions based on that. And what is the periodic variation? From the left to right in the period, effective nuclear charge increases and that is why in a period Z effective increases by 0.65 and atomic size decreases considerably. Whenever attraction forces are there, electron come close to the nucleus, atomic size decreases. And similarly, in the transition series, atomic number increases by plus 1 but screening effect increases by 0.85 roughly. So that Z effective is also 0.15 is increased. And based on that, we have to just involve in the discussion about atomic size variation and ionization energy also depending on the effective nuclear charge. Let us talk about the atomic size. So the distance between the nucleus and the outermost electron is called atomic size. But atoms are not free in state. So that they are in a combined state. I would say the various depending upon the type of the bond they have. We have metallic radii, covalent radii, ionic radii as well as van der Waal radii. Let us talk about the metallic radii is also called as a crystal radii. It is the half of the distance between the this is the nucleus and this is the nucleus and it is 2 or so crystal radii or metallic radii is half of the internuclear distance. So, this distance you have to consider. For a covalent molecule, this distance you have to consider. For a ionic radius, the charge, the cation and anion and this is your cation radius and this is your anion radius. So, the atomic radii is d by 2 depending upon the situation where you are measuring the distance. And also, you have the van der Waal radii is also very important. So, this van der Waal radii is a molecule and a molecule between these two a covalent bond is there. Let us say another molecule and another molecule and these two molecules are attracted by the van der Waal forces of attraction. So, half of the internuclear distance between the two atoms of the neighboring molecule is called as van der Waal radii. You know van der Waal radii values are 40 percent bigger values as compared to the covalent radius values. And of course, let us see whatever the radius is considered. I just want to take about the factors affecting the atomic radius. This is very, very important point. So, this table can give you questions based on the neat examination. So, atomic radius inversely related to effective nuclear charge and also more the effective nuclear charge lesser is the smaller is the size and atomic radius is directly proportional to screening effect or shielding effect and more the screening effect bigger is the size and atomic radius inversely proportional to magnitude of the positive charge. So, as positive charge increased nuclear charge increased atomic size decreased and also say atomic radius is directly proportional to number of shells this is a topmost point as number of shells increases technically and eventually the size of the atom increases atomic size is directly proportional to magnitude of the negative charge and atomic radius is inversely proportional to bond order as the number of bonds increases bond order increases that is the reason why single bond is longer than double bond is longer than triple bond. So, based on that you are going to decide the factors of the atomic size or the ionic size and it is very important you take a snap of this everybody and also let us talk about the periodic variation of atomic radius across a period 
atomic size decreases because the shell number is constant and uh, effective nuclear charge increases. And also say down the group you are going to increase the number of shells as the shell number increases the atomic radius increases. Like that you can say uh, one more ionization potential or ionization energy or ionization enthalpy is a one more periodic function in that the amount of energy that required to remove an electron from an isolated gaseous neutral atom is called as ionization energy to form a unipositive ion. Why isolated neutral atom is taken without having any bond with the other atom. So, we have successive ionization energies for M the successive ionization energy M let us say an element. So, first ionization energy first electron is removed, second electron is removed second ionization energy, third electron is removed third ionization energy. And if you consider this IE1, IE2 and IE3 for any atom any situation there is no exception IE1 is less than IE2 is less than IE3 is less than and it so on. And let us talk about very important the factors affecting the ionization energy. So, first atomic size ionization potential inversely proportional to atomic size. This atom ka size bada hai us atom ka ionization potential kam hoga. And also effective nuclear charge more the effective nuclear charge more will be the ionization energy and also screening effect ionization energy inversely related to screening effect jiska screening effect jada hai uska ionization potential kam hoga and also very important penetration power so penetration power means the involvement of electron towards the nucleus it all depends upon which orbital the electron residing. So, the penetration power S is more than P is more than D is more than F. And if you want to remove an electron from S orbital of the same shell is difficult as compared to the electron removing from the P orbital. Like that if you can say beryllium and boron, beryllium has 2s2, up 2s2 configuration say electron nikalna koshish karam. Boron se nikalna ke liye 2p orbital se nikalna padta hai. So, as s orbital is having more penetration power, beryllium is having more ionization energy as compared to the boron. And uh, after losing one electron, boron attends electron configuration for the second ionization potential fir bhi ulta ho jayega. Boron is greater than beryllium. And it goes like this and the periodic variation and also see stability of half filled and fully filled electronic configuration is an important factor that decides the ionization energy. And half filled and fully filled electronic configurations are stable as compared to the incompletely filled electronic configuration. So, agar aap a, I say stable electronic configuration say electron nikalna koshish karta hon. So, it require more energy. That is the reason why the atoms having the completely filled half filled electron configuration do have high ionization energy as compared to incompletely filled ion, uh, electronic configuration. So, like that you can see periodic variation of ionization energy in a group and a period variation in a period effective nuclear charge increases and size decreases across the period ionization energy increases. And in a down the group size increases, ionization energy decreases. And it is a simple version electron affinity. The minimum amount of energy, the amount of energy that liberated when an extra electron is added to isolated gaseous neutral atom is called electron affinity. And this electron affinity is of course it is an exothermic process because energy is released according to thermodynamics. And sometimes it could be positive as well. And you can see the fluorine electron is added F minus 1 gaya, 328 kilojoules per mole. So, electron affinity is 328. Magnitude is taken. Electron affinity means magnitude. And nitrogen electron is added to become N minus. Its magnitude is going to be here positive here. So, noble gases 
helium neon organ krypton xenon and some elements like nitrogen to have positive electron affinity values and also periodic variation in electron affinity in a periodic variation the ionization energy and electron affinity follows the same across the period ionization energy increases and down the group ionization energy decreases sorry uh, electron affinity also uh, ionization energy across the period increases down the group it decreases and electron negativity electron negativity is a relative tendency of an atom to attract the shared pair of electron more towards its more towards itself so it's a relative phenomena and uh, it, there is no unit dimension for to calculate this but we can measure this by using a mulliken scale and uh, pauling scale but we use the pauling scale to decide about the pauling scale is related to the resonance energy of a molecule let us say a is an element b is an element they are in a bond with the electron negativities of a and b if the xa is electron negativity of a and xb or electron negativities of b and the difference between the electron negativity of a and b is equal to 0.208 root delta so what is delta delta it uh, measures the experimental bond value bond dissociation energy value minus theoretical bond dissociation energy values and you can calculate electron negativity based on that and you can also have the mulliken scale based on this but mulliken scale we don't use electron negativity of the pauling scale we use and the pauling scale is based on the standard hydrogen and the fluorine values and periodic variation in a periodic variation across the period electron negativity increases down the group electron negativity decreases and this electron negativity gives a lot of information for the elemental behavior so electron affinity electron negativity measures the metallic and non metallic nature so metallic nature and non metallic nature non metallic nature is directly proportional to the electron negativity value that's the reason why down the group metallic nature increases across the period non metallic nature increases and also you have nature of oxides so an element combined with an oxygen forms a binary compound it is called an oxide these oxides are three types basic oxide acidic oxide neo neutral oxide can also be an amphoteric oxide total four types of oxides if the electron negativity of a and uh, electron negativity of the oxygen if that difference is greater than 2.3 it is supposed to form a basic oxide and a and oxygen if it is equal to 2.3 it is going to form amphoteric oxide it has both acidic as well as basic properties and a minus oxygen is less than 2.3 it is going to form an acidic oxide and let us see the periodic variation along a period acidic nature of oxides increases down the group basic nature of oxides increases and you can see some examples like beryllium oxide aluminum oxide zinc oxide tin oxide lead oxide sno2 pbo2 sb2o3 these are all amphoteric oxides while carbon monoxide water no and 2o are the neutral oxides in the neat examination you will be asking a question like which of the following is a neutral oxide which of the following is an amphoteric oxide this is a super important topic you all just make a note of it and you just see the summary of the total periodic properties here in the periodic properties atomic radius increases and uh, across the period atomic radius decreases and uh, down the group ionization energy decreases across the period ionization energy increases similarly electron affinity across a period increases and down the group decreases and also metallic nature down the group increases across the period decreases non metallic nature across the period increases down the group decreases electron negativity across the period increases down the group decreases 
and this is a total picture about the periodic table in a short capture i have given to you and you all please like this session share with your friends and subscribe the infinity learn neat youtube channel thank you very much thank you